In 1994, a story came along about a man of low intelligence who happens to hit a few lucky breaks, weaving himself in and out of the timeline of American history and into the hearts of millions of moviegoers. That man is Forrest, Forrest Gump. For the month of February, I'll be focusing episode topics on historical and pop culture references in the movie. Ones you may have missed when watching the film because of the overwhelming emotion attached to every scene, or ones you may only be familiar with on the surface. In this episode, we're starting at the beginning of the movie, with the man Forrest Gump was named after. Some of the content may not be suitable for all listeners. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is the story behind Nathan Bedford Forrest. But first, a quick message. If you like this podcast, you might be interested in other podcasts that focus on the humanities. In fact, if you search Twitter for the hashtag Humanities Podcasts, you'll find plenty of shows on history, language, literature, philosophy, art, and more. These are podcasts by people who enjoy telling stories, exploring the arts in our world, and who want to share their knowledge. Some examples of podcasts you'll find are Go Dig a Hole, an archaeology podcast, the Trojan War podcast, which retells the classic myth, and As We Like It, where three friends talk about film adaptions of Shakespeare. Search the hashtag Humanities Podcast today, or follow Humanities Podcasters on Twitter. And if you're a Humanities Podcaster, use the hashtag in your tweets so others can find you. Now, when I was a baby, Mama named me after the great Civil War hero, General Nathan Bedford Forrest. She said we was related to him in some way, and what he did was he started up this club called the Ku Klux Klan. They'd all dress up in their robes and their bed sheets and act like a bunch of ghosts or spooks or something. They'd even put bed sheets on their horses and ride around. And anyway, that's how I got my name, Forrest Gump. Mama said that the forest part was to remind me that sometimes we all do things that, well, just don't make no sense. This may be one of the darkest episodes of this podcast, but the picture of Nathan Bedford Forrest, painted by the few lines delivered by Tom Hanks, is vastly different than the legacy of the real Forrest. The Nathan Bedford Forrest shown in the movie was actually footage of Tom Hanks superimposed into the controversial 1915 film, Birth of a Nation. I didn't even realize it was Tom Hanks until I took a closer look while researching. Nathan Bedford Forrest was born July 13, 1821, into a poor household in Tennessee. He received no formal education, and when he was 16, his father died. He went into business with his uncle. When his uncle was killed in a street fight, Forrest went after the assailants and killed two of them with a bowie knife and a pistol. He became successful in business, dealing in stagecoaches, cotton, land, and slaves. And when the Civil War broke out, he joined the army as a private and used his own funds to equip his unit. He quickly rose through the ranks and even put a recruiting notice in a Memphis newspaper with the line, Come on, boys, if you want a heap of fun and to kill some Yankees. He was known for being daring, especially in the face of defeat. Even though he received a gunshot wound to the back during the Battle of Shiloh in 1862, he still led a charge against Union troops. He was successful at raids and even interfered with Union communication lines. He was known for his bold guerrilla tactics, as well as his battlefield skills. But he hit a controversy during the Battle of Fort Pillow in 1864, when the Union troops surrendered. But Forrest and his men massacred the mostly black troops there. The incident is still considered an unambiguous war crime, and black Union soldiers began using Remember Fort Pillow as a rallying cry. Forrest was able to partially redeem himself when he and men defeated troops double their size at Bryce's Crossroads, and General Sherman declared... That devil Forrest must be hunted down and killed if it costs 10,000 lives and bankrupts the federal treasury. In 1865, when General Lee surrendered, Forrest surrendered as well, saying, 
Any man who is in favor of a further prosecution of this war is a fit subject for a lunatic asylum. Forrest was considered a war hero in the South. He was the most promoted man on either side of the war, going from private to lieutenant general. He was known as the wizard in the saddle for his accomplishments. For the years following, he seemed to try to make amends for his actions at Fort Pillow. He wrote a letter giving praise to President Johnson's reconstruction policy and showed his support for unifying the North and the South. But that's not the Nathan Bedford Forrest you might remember from the movie Forrest Gump. Remember when I said Forrest was a successful businessman prior to the war? One of his main businesses was the trade of slaves. When the war ended and slaves were set free, Forrest had a tough time finding his footing in business again. He tried his hand at working in the railroad business, but didn't find much luck. He even wrote to Union General Sherman, his former enemy, offering his services when rumors of a potential war with Spain arose. Sherman declined the offer, but not because of a grudge, but because he didn't expect a war with Spain would require a cavalry on land. Writing to the War Department, Sherman said of Forrest, I would unhesitatingly accept his services and give him a prominent place. I believe now he would fight against our national enemies as vehemently as he did against us, and that is saying enough. Forrest was always recognized for his leadership skills. And unfortunately, that trait would end up bringing about his notoriety as a leader of the Ku Klux Klan. In April 1867, there were murmurs surrounding a group of ex-Confederates who wanted to organize with the intention of rebelling against the newly given rights to former slaves and intimidating blacks, northerners, and republicans. This group became known as the Ku Klux Klan. Stories vary as to whether it was Forrest's former artillery chief, John Morton, who sought out Forrest, or if Forrest himself heard of the Klan and traveled to Nashville on his own to join. But when the group's numbers swelled and the need for a leader became clear, Morton, who was Grand Cyclops of the Nashville branch, indoctrinated Forrest with a formal ceremony, and Forrest was made Grand Wizard. Because of this, statues, highways, and memorials in his name have been under fire. His quick portrayal by Tom Hanks in Forrest Gump added to more people knowing his name and associating him with the KKK over anything else he did in his life. But what Forrest Gump didn't mention was that only one year after being named the first Grand Marshal, Forrest tried to break up the KKK after noticing the counterproductive measures in which those beneath him conducted themselves and their dens. It is therefore ordered and decreed that the masks and costumes of this order be entirely abolished and destroyed. Forrest was seen as a softened, retired veteran for the rest of his life, promoting peace. He even asked his former comrades in arms to decorate the graves of dead Union soldiers with him. And one of his last appearances was when a group of blacks in Memphis presented him with a bouquet representing reconciliation. Many things have been said about me which are wrong, and which white and black persons here who stood by me through the war can contradict. I have been in the heat of battle when colored men asked me to protect them. I have placed myself between them and the bullets of my men and told them they should be kept unharmed. Go to work, be industrious, live honestly, and act truly, and when you are oppressed I'll come to your relief. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for this opportunity you have afforded me to be with you and to assure you that I am with you in heart and in hand. His obituary in the New York Times from 1877 doesn't make mention of his association with the Ku Klux Klan, but it does mention the one stain on his record, which he tried for years to make up for, was the incident at Fort Pillow. The role of General Sherman was played by Mark from the Unskippable podcast and the band And Robots. And Matt from the One Word Go Show played the role of Nathan Bedford Forrest. Information for this episode was sourced from history.com, civilwar.org, 
the book Nathan Bedford Forrest in Search of the Enigma by Eddie W. Davison, and more links which can be found in the show notes at thestorybehindpodcast.com. Follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at storybehindpod, or subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you'll never miss an episode. Thanks for listening.